and welcome to Biostat Squid. In this tutorial we will learn how to do some general doublet QC and we will learn how to remove doublets from our Sarah object in R for single cell RNA-seq data. This tutorial assumes you have already run one or more tools for doublet detection, so you have your singlet and doublet annotations in the metadata. So if you haven't yet, check out my previous videos on doublet detection using SC Doublet Finder and Doublet Finder to identify doublets. As always, you can find the code I am using in this tutorial at biostatsquid.com, where you can also find a step-by-step -step explanation of the code. Or you can just get the entire script from Biostatsquid's GitHub page. So if you're ready, let's dive in. In the last video, we ran Doublet Finder, but you may have run different tools for doublet detection. That's okay. Basically, in the metadata of your Syrah object, you have one or more columns with labels singlet or doublet for each cell. We can get a quick summary of how many doublets were called by Doublet Finder and how many were called by SC Doublet Finder. Let's get a quick summary of the percentages. As you can see, Doublet Finder finds fewer doublets than SC Doublet Finder. This could be for several reasons. I may have underestimated the number of expected doublets, for example, which is one of the inputs for Doublet Finder, or I might need to fine tune SC Doublet Finder's parameters since I just went with the defaults. But when you run different tools, you cannot really expect a perfect match since their algorithms work differently. Moving on, if you run a few doublet finding tools, it's sometimes useful to know how many cells were classified as doublets by both tools, how many were consensus singlets, and how many differ, so were called different things by different tools. This is very easy to do with the function table. And now we can create a new column, doublet consensus, which basically marks cells as singlet if they were a consensus singlet, doublet if both tools agreed and classified it as a doublet, and then either double finder singlet, SC doublet, doublet, and vice versa if the tools disagreed. This is kind of the same thing we were doing with the table function, except now we are labeling each cell. We do this to have a look at some general QC stats, which may help us decide how to filter out our doublets from our dataset. For example, one of the main QC checks is to see how many doublets were detected per sample. You want to make sure that not all doublets are coming from one sample. That would be a bit suspicious, let's say. We see cells that were classified as singlets by both tools tend to have a lower number of features and counts with this violin plot. And we can also plot a density plot. Okay, let's save our Sara object. I like to save it as an intermediary, uh, intermediary object before I filter doublets out in case I change my mind later on after downstream analysis and decide to be more or less stringent with my doublet filtering. So I don't need to start the pre-processing from scratch. Nice, so now that we have it saved, we can remove doublets from our data set. We can do this very easily with the function subset, which is part of Sura. We clearly want to remove cells that were classified as doublets by both tools. And we also know that we want to keep cells that were classified as singlets by both tools. The tricky part is the cells that were classified as singlets by one tool and doublets by another. Which tool is correct? They are both inferring if the cell is a doublet, so it is not easy to decide. Here we have this number of cells that were classified as doublet by SC Doublet Finder, but singlet by Doublet Finder, and the other way around. So there are several things that can help you decide. There are some benchmarking papers that compare different doublet finding tools by running them on a data set with known ground truth and give you stats on the accuracy. So that might help you trust one tool more than another. 
You can also run a third doublet detection tool and get the consensus of the tree. Or you can decide to be more lenient. So if at least one tool says it's a singlet, then you keep that cell in. Or be more stringent, meaning that if at least one tool classifies it's a cell as a doublet, you remove it. It also depends on how many cells you have originally and how many you're willing to remove in this doublet filtering step. So there's not really a right answer. It depends very much on your data set. You might proceed with your analysis and get a UMAP of cell clusters, and you might realize that you have a cluster of doublets, in which case it's often better to remove that cluster and then reprocess the data again to cl get cleaner clusters. So it's frequently kind of an iterative process. So in this example, I'm just going to keep cells that were classified as singlets by either tool. Nice. So it's always good to double check that no genes have been removed, just cells. And you can also get the number of cells you removed. Finally, we can save the filtered Sura object. And that is all for today. Squid-tastic. Thank you very much for watching. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. Let me know what you thought of this tutorial series. And if you have any ideas for new topics you'd like to see, leave me a comment down below. Have a squid-tastic day and see you in the next one.